All right, everybody, welcome back uh, to Simple Harmonic Motion. Today we are finally talking about something other than springs, which are pendulums, and more specifically, simple pendulums. All right, so here we go. Simple pendulum. A simple pendulum is an idealized model consisting of a point mass suspended by a massless, unstretchable spring. So just like an ideal pendulum, okay? We're not talking about weird shapes. We're not talking about rubber bands, just... Everything as ideal as possible, okay? And as we know, pendulums kind of swing back and forth, back and forth, having this oscillation, this simple harmonic motion. Okay, so the formula for uh, simple pendulums. So the period, the period of a pendulum is going to be equal to 2 pi square root of the length of the string, how far it is, and divided by the gravity how much gravity is accelerating or pulling down on this mass. Okay. All right, let's do some examples to make this make sense. Okay, uh, example number 15. Find the period and frequency of a simple pendulum one meter long. Okay, so again, the formula is period is equal to 2 pi square root of L over G. So remember the length of this string how far it uh, starts swinging from is one meter, and we're assuming we are on Earth. So, two pi square root of one divided by 10. Let's see what we get here. Two pi square root of one divided by 10. And we get 1.99 seconds. That is the period. Okay, and if we're looking for frequency, uh, we should already know how this works. Frequency is equal to the inverse of period. So I'm just going to do power of negative 1. And we get 0 0.5. The frequency is equal to 0 0.5 hertz. Again, what does this hertz mean? That means that... Um, so this is telling us that the period means it goes all the way here and all the way back in 2 seconds. One full cycle in 2 seconds. This frequency tells us how how many times of a cycle in one second? So it goes half a cycle in one second. So one second, it's just going to go all the way over here. That's it. All right, moving on. A 0 0.4 kilogram mass swings on a <coughs> simple pendulum with a length of 1.2 meters. At its peak, the pendulum reaches a height of 0 0.07 meters during its simple harmonic motion. What is the maximum speed of the bob? Okay, hmm. A lot going on here. Uh, let's just kind of write some things out. Mass is equal to 0 0.4 kilograms. We have the length of the string being 1.2 meters. The pendulum reaches a height of 0 0.07 meters. So for this height is equal to 0 0.07 meters. And we want to find the speed at this point. Okay, and how do we know this is the maximum speed? So this is the point where it's going to be going the fastest. It's going to be swinging back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But this is the point where it's going to be going the fastest. Okay, so here it's speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, going fast. And it starts to slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, going the fastest, then slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. Okay, so we're trying to find this. And how we're going to do this is actually energy. We're going to think about all of the energy here. And then all of the energy at this lowest point. So we're going to have all gravitational potential energy first. I'll do gravitational potential energy at this point because it's not moving momentarily. It's all gravitational potential energy. And at the lowest point, there's no gravitational potential energy, just kinetic energy. So we should know this is mgh is equal to 1 half mv squared. So m.4, gravity 10. Height is 0 0.07. This is going to be equal to 1 half mass 0.4 V squared. And then we can find what V is. Okay, 4 times 0.7 times 2 divided by 0.4. And the square root, uh, 1.18 meters per second. Okay, that is the fastest it is going to be going while it is oscillating. All right, moving on. 
A simple pendulum has a length L and a mass M swings with a period T. If both L and M are doubled, what is the new period? Okay. Again, a lot of times people want to think about this intuitively. Do not think about it intuitively. Try to analyze, and if you can try to get a formula, that'd be great. So we know the period of a pendulum is 2 pi square root of L over G. Let's talk about the mass first. Okay, so if the mass is doubled, what happens? Okay, if this mass gets so much bigger and more mass, what happens? Well, we can look at the equation that actually the period doesn't care about the mass. I mean, you might be thinking like, oh my, well, if it's heavier, wouldn't it swing faster? And that's what your intuition might say. However, remember, all things fall at the same rate with no air resistance. So that's why mass doesn't matter. And that's why it's not part of this equation. So it doesn't matter what happens to the mass if it's smaller or bigger. But the length does matter. We see that length is part of this equation. And if this doubles, that means over here, this needs to also double. Or I should say square root of 2 because this is under the square root. Okay? So it's going to be C. Hope that makes sense. I know people usually have a hard time with that. But if you do, you can always just plug in random numbers and then you can get your answer as well. Okay? Good video demonstrating how different lengths of the pendulum affect the pendulum. Okay, example number 10, uh, conceptual. A pendulum clock on the surface of the Earth has a period of one second. On a distant planet, the length of the pendulum must be shortened slightly to have a period of one second. What is true about the acceleration of gravity due to, gra uh, due to gravity on the distant planet? What is true about the acceleration due to gravity on the distant planet? Okay, uh, A, gravity is slightly greater than Earth. B, uh, gravity is slightly less than Earth. C, Gravity is equal to Earth, D, impossible to tell. Okay, so again, let's analyze instead of using our intuition. Period is equal to 2 pi, square root of the length, divided by gravity. So, we want this period to stay the same. Okay? We know that when we go to this distant planet, what's going to happen is the length of the pendulum has to be shortened, meaning this has to go down in order for this period to stay the same. So this goes down, and this period stays the same. So we have to think, what needs to change in order for this to stay the same? And that means if this went down, this g also has to go down, okay, proportionally. That is the only way this period can stay the same. So gravity is slightly less than Earth, okay? I hope that made sense. Okay, moving on. Example number 17. A simple pendulum has, uh, that has a length of 0 0.24 meters is placed at an angle of 3.5 degrees and released. How much time does it take the pendulum to reach its highest speed? Okay, so this might be a little more confusing, but I think we can do it. So again, period is equal to 2 pi square root of the length divided by gravity. So we have 2 pi square root of the length, which is 0.24, gravity, which is 10. So let's just kind of put that in a calculator first of all. 2 times pi times square root of 0.24 divided by 10. And we get the period as 0 0.97 seconds. However, that's not the answer. How much time does it take the pendulum to reach its highest speed? So first of all, the highest speed is right here. But a period is from here, all the way over here, and then all the way back. So this is only from here to here. That is only one-fourth of its motion. So to find uh, how long it's going to take to go to fast speed, I'm just going to do 0 0.97 divided by 4. And then I get it's going to take a time of 0 0.24. Part B, how much time does it take if the pendulum is released at an angle of 1.75 degrees? So now it's not released here, but now it is released like here. And you might think, oh, since it has a shorter time, shorter distance, 
that means it will probably take less time to get to this point over here. And that is your intuition speaking. And again, with physics, we usually don't want to listen to our intuition. We want to analyze. Okay, period is equal to 2 pi square root of the length divided by gravity. What we should see here is amplitude has nothing to do with, or the angle or the amplitude has nothing to do with the period. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you release it here. It doesn't matter if you release it here. It's not going to matter. It's going to take the same amount of time. Okay, might not really seem so intuitive, but that's the correct answer. And it's going to take the same time, 0.24 seconds. This next video actually shows why that is. So I suggest looking at that video. All right, let's look at this example. When a pendulum with a bob passes through its equilibrium position, which direction is the acceleration pointed? Okay, interesting question here. Okay, so when we go over here, we have this and let's kind of draw a free body diagram we have force of gravity and then force of tension okay and you might think okay so there's only acceleration if there's a net force and you might think okay force of tension and force of gravity must be equal to each other and they must cancel out so there must be no acceleration at this point However, let's not forget about uniform circular motion. And remember, when it's going over here, there's going to be a centripetal force uh, making it go into a circle, meaning this force of tension is going to be a lot more than this force of gravity. Sorry, <laughs> I need to draw that straight. This force of tension is going to be a lot more than the force of gravity. So the net force is going to be upward, that means the net acceleration is going to be upward. That's the centripetal acceleration. All right, moving on. All right, actually, that's it. Um, so that's simple pendulums. Next time, we're probably going to talk about the hardest part of this uh, unit, which is uh, graphs with simple harmonic motion. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.